Jonathan, firstly, thanks for the invitation to Bell Engineering today. Can you tell me when the company was founded and what your vision was for the business? Right, so the, the company was founded in 2011. Um, our vision at the time was to get into larger machining services, um, initially for group companies, part of our owner's group of companies, um, but later to, uh, to service um, some of the more niche applications. And there's been so much investment here since the business was founded. Just give us a flavour, our audience a flavour of how much you, you have invested in the company. So initially the Skoda, we invested, I think, in that project around about £3 million. Since then we've uh, invested in this building, the plant and facility of about £5 million and in machine tools of about £15 million. And what industries would you be servicing? Um, it's, a, it's fairly niche. Uh, we're looking at civil nuclear in terms of some of the, um, the, the reprocessing of fuels. Uh, we're looking at some defence applications, mainly marine, um, and also back into our traditional applications, which were oil and gas. And what would you say that your USPs are here uh, in the company? So what, we're, what our USPs are really is the fact that we can machine from a handheld product up to something that weighs 50 tonnes, we can procure the materials, we can um, conduct NDT services, uh, we can manage complex supply chains both in the UK and also abroad. Okay, I'm very excited to go downstairs onto the shop floor and meet with Neil and, and actually have a look at what you're doing. So we stop here first. This is very much about large machining, isn't it, Neil? What, what, what is the size of parts you can actually do in here? We can turn from one metre chuck diameter up to three metre chuck diameter. We can swing probably 3.7 metres on the largest machine, um, up to a height of about four metres under the jib. And have you ever maxed that out? Would you ever get to components or parts that size? Certainly on diameter, height and weight, probably not. The, the largest machine can take 45 tonnes on the table. We haven't hit that yet, but that's our ambition almost. And you, Some of these machines here, we've got Toss Hewlin, we've got Giddings and Lewis. They're, they're fundamentally turning or boring machines, but have, they, have you got multi-function capability with them as well? Absolutely. Um, all of the horizontal borers have facing heads, so they can do full turning. Um, some of the machines have right angle heads, so we can hit kind of um, fe um, features 90 degree to the main spindle, which for concentricity issues is, is key. And I, I imagine there's a lot of money tied up here in components, isn't there, or in parts going through this particular large machining area? Absolutely. Typically, we have about £1 million worth of whip in the facility at any one time. Um, that's fairly typical month to month. Okay, let's move on to medium sized machining. Let's go. Through. So this is your medium machining cell. M most engineers and myself would look at a lot of these parts and actually say, this is large component machine. Yes, I mean, to us we class it as medium due to the size of the machines in the large cell, but um, these are 600 mil chucks and on the horizontal machining centers we've got 800 mil pallets. And there's no compromise in technology here, is there? We're looking at mill turn machines. And Absolutely not. The horizontals typically all have D'Andrea heads, so again, they can hit these kind of other axes. Um, the mill turns are kind of well established now, with, you know, doing a lot of complicated one-offs and batch work. T tell me about the, the operators and the programmers here, uh, certainly in this cell and the large machining. Do they, are they universal? Can they drift between areas? We tend to like to keep the guys within the same cell. They'll certainly move around within the cell, but there's a lot of familiarity with control that we like to keep, rather than having them drop from Mazatrol to Fanec to Siemens. It just gives you that kind of continuity that we require. And let's say in this medium machining area, what, what sort of um, shifts are you operating? Is it, is it, is it single shift or? The, the medium cell is all on at least three shifts and uh, the plan is to get some of the machines onto continental shifts and that's to support this kind of fluctuating demand we see from our customer base. So we've looked at large machining, we've looked at what, what we class in here as medium. You also have a small machining cell as well, don't you? What, what, what size to you guys is small and what's in there? Typically, 12 and 10 inch chucks, um, again some small Indigrex type machine tools, some Mori NT, so lots of five axis w um, work that su like supports the defence industry predominantly, um, some valve components in there as well. And would it be fair for me to say that a lot of what I'm seeing seems to be a little bit more turning focused than milling, is that is that a good analysis? It is and I think that's to do with the, the traditional customers that we have, we are looking to expand on that and bring more kind of mill turn work into the business and that's where we see the kind of development and the growth. Okay, so when, when, when a part's machined it needs to be ground. Yes. I know you do all that in-house as well, so let's go and have a look at your grinding. 
complementary to machining, you've got a lot of grinding capability here as well, haven't you? Absolutely. Another one of our competitive advantages is the ability to, you know, we can just straightforward grind them. We've got vertical grinding, thread grinding, and we've got um, surface grinding and then lapping as well. Um, so we offer a lot in this facility. And I see over there a huge surface grinder. Is that three meters by a meter? Yeah, three meters by 1.5 meters. And over that table, we can guarantee three micron accuracy. NDT, tell me about that. Due to the nature of the components we produce, um, and N NDT is a big part of our business, we offer dye pen in various forms, including fluorescent, where we've got a dark room to facilitate that. We do MPI, um, cladding thickness checks, UT. Basically, if, you, if, if there's an NDT requirement, we can typically cover it. And uh, is this important to your customers? Sounds Absolutely like a really critical to our customers. It's, you know, it's, it's part of the attraction of Bell Engineering, the fact that we invest so heavily in this NDT side of the business. Um, we can cope with volume or you know small batch quantities, whatever the requirement is, we can typically deal with that. We can supplement these guys with um, contractors as well if we need to, and they'll come in fully qualified and you know to PCN level three or whatever we require. When it comes to the delivery of your parts, it is speed everything? I mean, can you turn components around faster, or, or is it more about getting the quality, getting right, following the procedures? Um, we can. If the, if the application allows it, we can certainly turn around parts in three to four days. But typically, due to the, the nature of the projects we work on, quality is critical. Um, so there tends to be a lot of stages you need to go through on each component to make sure we're compliant with the customer's MITP, inspection plans, that kind of thing. So we can do it, but typically our projects are slightly longer because of the kind of quality requirements. Traceability gives confidence. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and all of these parts typically are fully lot traced, cast numbers, etc. And we we'll offer full traceability right through the process. Just cementing your commitment to investment here at Bell Engineering, Neil, what, what's going on here? This is the installation of a Pietro Carnaghi um, full five axis machining centre. It has six pallets, three chucks essentially, and three pallets three 1.6 metre chucks and the pallet size is a 1.6 by 1.8 metres. Um, fully automated so the guys can be loading the machine, setting the machine while this thing's running. And it's true five axis capability with direct drives. Millions of pounds worth of investment, I'm sure. What, what sort of work are you going to be doing on here then? What, what makes it a bit different? What's it going to give you? It's typically tar targeting um, aerospace work, um, development work typically within the aerospace industry rather than the production work. And, and let's talk about how, how many guys do you employ here? How many, how many engineers have you got? We currently employ 210 people and we are looking to grow that number currently. So for, for people that are also look, looking for opportunities at a company at the moment, this, this would be a great place to come, Absolutely. wouldn't it? Absolutely, lot a of, lot of exciting opportunities with the five axis work that we're kind of developing. I've got to say, I, I, I'm, you know, what a fantastic facility that you have here. It's really good to see UK manufacturing prosper and investment like you've made here actually happening. What's your ambitions now for the next five to ten years, Jonathan? So I, I, I suppose we want to get into more complex machining. Uh, we want to do a little bit in terms of uh, machining in aerospace R&D um, and also give the inspection services. So we're currently installing this Pietro Canaghi flex turn machine that should be commissioned early next year. Uh, we're putting in a CMM that will be able to match its ability to machine, so we're putting in a Nikon 5 meter by 3 meter by 2.5 meter CMM. Um, so we want to get more into 5 axis, more complex structures, um, but also service our traditional customers that we have been doing. And it's not just equipment that you're investing in, you also invest in people, mm -hmm. don't you? From talking to Neil, you're actually on the lookout for, for, for more quality skilled engineers at the moment too. Yeah, so we're looking for um, CAM programmers, quality engineer, um, skilled machinists. Across the board, we're looking for people. We've got a fairly prosperous future, and we need, um, I suppose, good people working in the business, um, really good people. Um, some of the machines that we're running on are about the top level that you can um, be looking at, so we need really highly skilled people to do it.